When we set out to create SAP by industry.com, we wanted to create a site that would have specific content for specific industries. We wanted it to be highly relevant. So the first one that we created was public sector. But one of the challenges we faced was taking what is quite dense and complicated content and repurposing it, rewriting it in such a way that any person within the levels of government can uh, find the content on the site relevant. There are specifically three different areas or three user journeys that the person can have when they visit the site. The first one, the most obvious one, is using this flash media for people who are visual. And as you can see, if you wait long enough, it cycles and displays different types or departments which people may be interested in. In the center is, if you have a look at the site map, this is the most lowest level content which you can find, which is right at the bottom, the deepest part of the site, is what we call our level three content. And from here, it's very specific information that people might have about a certain type of topic. And if we go over to say this tab over here, the public sector tab, these are really broader, more areas that uh, a CFO, CIO level people in government would be interested in. And this is like level two information. For those who really didn't understand or cannot relate to any three of these user journeys, we have the one which most users on, on any website are familiar in, and that is something very simple like this that can get them and jump them into exactly where they need to get to. Some other things to note that we put into the site is the recent white papers, which are based on date that, the site, that they were uploaded into the site. The success stories, which are based on country, and we tried to make them very specific to Asia Pacific. And then it's these two, which are not really controlled by the site. This is determined by user interaction. So pages most visited appear at the top. And this is a feed from Google News with filters for Asia Pacific region. And of course, looking only at uh, stuff that's tagged with public sector. What I also liked about this site was the fact that you can also do a poll. Um, so this is some user generated content, which really doesn't require too much uh, uh, moderation on part of the client. In addition, there's also a contact tab, which is um, tagged using geodata. So depending on what country in Asia Pacific, where you reside, these details actually change according to your location. So let's now have a look at some content. Um, let's take a look at one of these level two pages. So let's say, for instance, we're looking at public administration. This is one of our top level pages that somebody quite senior in government would be interested in. So this really introduces the whole area of public administration. Um, there's some basic uh, sharing type functions where you can bookmark and share within different blogs and social networks, of course, which become quite standard, emailing to a colleague and of course print. Um, although a lot of sites are now doing away with it, we just we felt that the, um, the breadcrumb trail was still pretty important to us. We wanted our users to understand exactly where they were in the site. Unlike the main site, SAP.com, we try to use a lot more visualization within the context of the page. And further down, we wanted the person to keep reading. So rather than simply stop at here, at say for instance, a, a download a PDF, they might also be interested in looking at other content which is related to this particular section, like for instance, public sector accounting and integrated citizen services. So let's take a look at uh, public sector accounting. If I click on that, you can now see that um, the, using a very similar page template, we're able to show content which relates to that. But in addition, we're showing a little bit more, a uh, few more PDFs down the bottom here, Word documents and things like that, which are associated with this page using a sort of revolving mechanism. Um, some of the other pages have got a little bit more interactive content. Importantly to this site is the, the metric, one of the metrics we're using to measure through Google Analytics is the average time spent on the site. Uh, you know, we really want to achieve, achieve something around, you know, in the order of eight minutes. And there's no substitute. Uh, certainly video is one way to get people sticking to the site. Let's have a look at this one. So what's great about this is it actually starts playing immediately. To make a bigger impact on your business. In this period of economic uncertainty, most companies goals have been Okay, I'm going to stop that there. So with a reasonable connection, you can uh, stream and it will buffer uh, without any delay directly to the user. And unlike uh, MOV, this particular technology we're using, which is FOV, which is what a lot of video sites are now adopting, we found it to be a lot better. We tried MOV at the beginning, we had a lot of problems. Some of these videos we're hosting on here are around in the order of 40 megabytes, so it was quite difficult doing it that way. 
Now let's look at the second metric. It's all well and good that uh, the user being able to come on here and enjoy all this content that marketing has put up on the site. But to really, to get to the essence of the site, which is these very nice PDFs which are located here, to download these, uh, we'd like to know a little bit more about the user. So this is our second metric. Essentially, Google Analytics will be measuring uh, not only uh, average time spent on site, but also registrations. Interestingly, this component was actually built in Adobe Flex. Uh, we decided to use Adobe Flex just because it was so much easier um, to build it in and to be able to edit later and sort of refine it. So I'm just going to go ahead now and actually register myself. And hopefully I'm not registered in the system at the moment, so I should be able to demonstrate it. Okay, I'm going to use Gmail as my authentication, so I'll use my Gmail account. And in the moment, you'll see the advantages of doing it this way. So some basics here about my relationship and where I'm located. Let's just say I'm in Australia. Okay, and yes, I'd like to receive more information. Now, what will happen in just a moment here is we're getting around one of the barriers of registration that users face, which is um, double opt-in, whereby verification has to happen via their email account. So they have to log into their email, click a link, and then come back to the site. And of course, the problems with that is, is that you have email going into spam, uh, people forgetting to come back to the site, not finding the PDF they're trying to download. It's very, very frustrating to download. One PDF can take, um, you know, up to half an hour. This, hopefully, uh, will, there we go, has automatically, using APIs, authenticated me directly with um, Gmail, and I can now download my account. So, um, uh, SAP got out of this a verified email address, which is correct, and the user gets their PDF ultra fast. So here we go, the PDF should now open up, and uh, I can now review the PDF and I can download it. Because it's opened up in another window, I can travel back to the previous window, and I can continue browsing. Um, Adobe Flex, that system that we're talking about, the registration system, actually remembers who you are. So no matter where you go and where you decide that you wish to download content from, you don't have to re-register or re-log in. So for instance, if I wanted to go over to, I believe there's a PDF I can download from Tax and Revenue. Yeah, here we go. So if I wanted to download, for instance, a Tax and Revenue one, it will open in a new window again um, and begin downloading. So if I go download the PDF, I can now look at that. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you have any questions or you'd like to know more about what we can do, please contact us. Visit our site www.firestarter.com.sg or you can contact myself, Anthony Condurus, uh, info at firestarter.com.sg. Thanks very much.